Hi, I'm Jen. On behalf of AGFA, I'm excited to welcome you to the Windy City, home of one of the most storied jazz clubs in America, the Green Mill Jazz Club right here in Chicago. Now over 100 years old, the Green Mill sits at 4802 North Broadway in Uptown, one of the most acclaimed areas of old Chicago. And it's just steps away from two of the most famous and renowned music venues in Chicago history, the Aragon Ballroom and the Riviera Theater. Just like AGFA is inviting you to care to compare their digital radiography solutions to others, today we're going to explore how you can care to compare this deeply historic venue's past and present. So without further ado, let's check out this joint. I'm here with Dave Gemelo, owner of the Green Mill, who has been kind enough to give us an exclusive peek into this legendary Chicago club, and maybe show us a few hidden gems along the way. Dave, thank you so much for having us. Hey Jen, how are you? Good, and you? Wonderful. Maybe to start, Dave, could you tell us about this relief that I noticed as we walked in? Yeah, this was made by a, a guy named Dean Chance. He made it for the old owner in 1983, and it shows a little history of the Green Mill you know, with uh, big Al Capone sitting there and Joey Lewis singing on the stage and then Texas Guinan's there and uh, they talk about the raids with Captain O'Brien and things like that. And You know, it's a very interesting piece. So much history captured there. Yeah. So let's go on a little tour and see what we can find. That's the Al Capone booth right there. Of course. So we could see the streets, so right? Doors, yeah. yeah. I'm curious about the interior and the decor. Is everything original, or can you tell us a little bit about what you've restored? Well, the last major remodeling was 1942, and that's when the ceiling was lowered 36 inches for the ductwork for the air conditioning. And then all I did in 1986 is I built the big stage back there in the dance floor and uh, just restored everything else. I mean, the cash registers we still use, and that's a new, newer one, 1936, that's a 1934, and then our newest one in the front, 1940-something. That's like brand new. Wow. Are the picture frames original? They're from the 20s is what okay. I heard, yeah. you know, so it's hard to know, you know, it could be earlier because it's Art Nouveau, and Art Nouveau is actually before, you know, like the teens, you know what I mean? Okay. So it could be earlier. Even the clock, I had it fixed, and the guy that fixed it in, up in Minnesota, one of the nine people that knew how to work on it, wow. he said it's from like 1910. Oh, so cool. Yeah, so it's kind of neat, you know. How old is the organ? 64 years old. That's 1956. Okay. Organ, yeah. And the jukebox? Could be from the 60s or 70s, but we've had it here since the 80s. So I don't know how old it is, but it works. That's what we use. There's no... Uh, piped in music or anything. It's either live or quarter on the jukebox. Cool. Cash. Yeah. Cash. Cash is king. So can you tell us about the trap door behind the bar and the tunnels underneath the bar, what they were used for back in the Al Capone days versus now? Oh, you mean the trap door right there? Right there? there? <laughs> yeah. This is your exclusive peek. <laughs> Back in the Al Capone days, what I've heard is that, you know, you go down into the tunnels and there's secret rooms on the sides and they would have anything goes parties, meaning like anything goes, you know, gambling, girls, wow. liquor that you're not getting in coffee cups, you know, like gambling, everything. And uh, then if there was a raid, there was a way of letting them know and then they didn't have to come up back this way through the trap door, they would just go through the tunnels and end up out on Lawrence Avenue or on Broadway or in the Aragon Ballroom and they were able to get away and Amazing. that's what they were used for back then. Now we use it for storage and things like that and normal <laughs> kind of basement thing. It's where you, you know, keep the extra napkins and... Yeah, liquor and <laughs> you know, a lot of stuff. And that is Chicago history. <laughs> What is the association between the Green Mill and Al Capone? Well, he used to hang out here because Joey Lewis would play here in 1927. It was Al Capone's favorite singer. So Al Capone started hanging out here to see him. And another connection is uh, Machine Gun Jack McGurn 
who worked for Al Capone, owned this place during Prohibition. He's the guy that did the St. Valentine's Day Massacre for Al Capone, so it's kind of a lot of history there. And uh, even before Al Capone, there would be like Charlie Chaplin and Wallace Beery, Sophie Tucker, you know, uh, some of those guys are making movies at SNA Studios just down the block. So they actually had a hitching post in front of the joint. So when they were making westerns, they could just ride their horses over to have a drink. So that's kind of neat. And then Al Capone came after that, and then there's a lot of celebrities come here, you know, in the last 30 something years too, so. Sure. Yeah. Wow, I can just see that, H horses. Yeah, right. Down Broadway. <laughs> Can you tell us about some famous people presently who have hung out at the mill? Well, I got drunk with Johnny Depp. He was coming in a lot when they were filming uh, that John Dillinger movie, you know? <laughs> sure. Because Michael Mann, you know, did uh, the movie Thief here. Okay. And he was a director of that movie. So he told Depp, Depp, go down to the Green Mill. It's a cool place, you know? And then he comes in with a bodyguard. He was real nice, too, you know? And he says, oh, let me talk to the owner. So we sat there and we were drinking wine the whole time. And uh, well, Vince Vaughn comes here all the time, you know, because he's from the sh Chicago, you know. Sure. Bill Gates has been here. I can't remember more, but there's lots of because we shot a lot of movies here. We shot like 14 movies here, so the band you're going to see is really good. I can't wait. Well, they play uh, hot jazz, you know, they're very particular with it. And these guys play it all the way it was written at the time. A lot of it's Chicago style hot jazz, and then there's a New York style hot jazz, a New Orleans style hot jazz, and they know all the differences in it. They're kind of weird about that. It's like they know all of this stuff. No microphones, the charts are written the way they would have been played in 1920s, which is really cool. Andy's a leader, and he'll, like, there's a good song, and there's no charts, so he'll listen to it and write every note for every instrument. They got hundreds and hundreds of songs, and it's pretty cool that they're uh, very authentic, let's say, and I get a kick out of that. Well, now let's go listen to the band. Yeah, come on, let's go listen to the band. It's right over here. I'm Andy Shum with Chicago Cellar Boys. Everybody welcome here to the Green Mill. We're gonna play for Ag for Cares in Chicago. And this first song is called That's a Play. Thank you so much. Andy, could you tell us uh, how long you've been playing at the Green Mill? I was thinking about the other day, uh, I think it's 13 years continuously. Wow, 13 years. Yeah. And could you share a favorite memory that you have of playing here? I, I think my, the best memory really is walking in the doors for the first time, just unbelievable. I mean, I, I've been playing pizza parlors and old folks homes up to that point. I walked in here and go, this is a real joint. It's a real old fashioned tavern, old fashioned jazz club, just amazing, actually amazing. Yeah, it's a special place. Yeah.
What would you say sets Chicago jazz apart from other classic Chicago genres like blues? Yeah, well, uh, our expertise is in the 1920s and 30s, and the Chicago jazz of those days was really was kind of the punk rock of its day. It was a high school, Austin High, you know, on the west side of Chicago, and all these guys came from there, these teenagers, Bud Freeman, Benny Goodman, Frank Teschmacher, Gene Krupa, these guys, they're the young guys, and they saw the old New Orleans guys playing downtown and on the south side, and they emulated it, but they put their own unique uh, young person flair on it.
evolution of jazz music over the last three to four decades? Yeah, well, I think it's changed quite a bit in the last 20, 30 years. Um, I started playing about almost 20 years ago when I was in my teens. And back then, there was just a lot of uh, factions. People wanted it this way, wanted it this way. But we're, we're in a fully postmodern um, situation now where everything is kind of cool. Uh, there are young people dancing to old time jazz. Uh, there's people that enjoy really avant garde jazz. Uh, but it's just transitioned to more of an acceptance of all kinds of, of jazz, and I think that's a great thing. It sure is. Thank you so much. Of course. We appreciate you. Dave, thank you so much for showing us your incredible establishment. Great to have you, Jen. Thanks for coming by. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. We hope you enjoyed this exclusive look into the Green Mill Jazz Club, undeniably an iconic mainstay of jazz music in both past and present. Let's care to compare together and stay safe, everyone. Thank you.